Oh boy. That, I just did a 10 minute podcast and I, it deleted on the system. So I'm pretty pissed off right now about that. So I'm going to have to do this one more efficient, quicker. I got another question from a listener about what to do when their trade stops working. And there's no super clear answer to this. I'm on a walk right now too, if it's a little noisy, just so you know, I didn't get a, I didn't give a super clear answer because there isn't one. And that's part of the skill set of being a good trader and doing this for a longer period of time is to really understand what you, how you excelled and how it mutates. So if you momentums and bursts and things like that, we saw for the last nine months, now we're getting this more rotational market where everyone wants to buy tech and everyone's chasing the last move we just had. It's a crowded, choppy trade, setting off stops, things coming back. You have to pay real close attention to, you know, if you used to buy it, it would go up after earnings. Now it goes up, it takes out the stops and then it goes up. Well, that's valuable information. That's market is mutating, adapting. You can start to start to look for that trade. Or maybe it just completely blows it off and goes up the day or two later. Well, that's more information. And it's a game. What are the other players doing? Where are they getting stuck? Um, how can you figure, figure unless the environment has really changed, like we're blowing up into a bear market, which doesn't seem to be happening right now. But if that happens, then it's a little different. Um, there's a debt crisis or something. It's always leverage that causes things to blow up. And right now, we're Fed is kind of making sure that that's not happening. So anyways, different topic. But... That's, I mean, when I was in my early 20s, I would just hammer and hammer away wild upswings and wild downswings. And now that I'm you know, 39 now, it's like I've been through you know, 103 different recycles of myself when my style stops working. And I have to, and I've built, in the last few years, I've really worked on building a whole different skill set, joining some groups, finding the smart people in the groups, joining subgroups, learning how to trade stocks from a longer time frame, using earnings and a little bit of fundamentals mixed with catalysts and other things and I found a whole bunch of things that weren't going to work for me that was not going to fit who I am and trying to bring over a little bit of what I already knew how to do and and had some people helping and it's been a great way for me to add to the, the side of myself that I hadn't been using as much which is just a blatant bull market which I honestly have always underperformed those I've done really well mostly when it's choppy or down those are my best years because I'm trading during the day and that's when it's most volatile so that's when that's when I learned to be at my at my best, but that's not, generally speaking, things go up and you want to be able to p play the other side as well too. So I've, I've kind of built myself up on that side now. So that's kind of aside from the question though that the listener had about, well, what do, how does that help me when my style stops working? Well, you have to, it's like, think about Roger Federer or a tennis player or anybody, a golfer. How do you, how do you win that match against somebody that you think you should beat, but you're just struggling with? It feels damn good to win that match when you're not playing your best or when you're struggling and they're hitting a shot that maybe exploits one of your weaknesses, even though you have a strong game overall. It's all part of the, the competition. It's what are the other players doing? What, what what information am I getting from my losers that it says it's different right now? Why is it different? And when you start asking all those questions and really studying what you're doing, you quickly can figure out that the, the environment has changed and there's different players doing different things. And I have to you know, there's a, there's a mentality by some people of, I just do what I do. You know, I come in and this is who I am. You know, we run the ball first, we pass second, we block hard, we play defense and we're not changing that for anybody. And there's another team who's like, yeah, well we change depending on, we, we have strengths that we like to leverage, but we change based on our opponent. I mean, is one better or worse? It just depends, I guess. And it's, it's like that with trading too. But for me, I was too active minded and, you know, I'm a busy body to, wait six months and just chill out while my strategy came back in style. So I was always tinkering, trying to find new things and I've lots of pain, lots of figuring out what didn't work. But I mean, that ultimately works, works to my advantage because I find out I get closer and closer to who I am when I find all these things that I'm not. And my, my stuff that I was good at and the stuff that you're good at will always be there for you to take advantage of. You'll just start knowing. But the, the way that your trade mutates and changes with conditions is something you have to be very perceptive of and not maybe trading as big and blowing yourself up on markets that don't fit you as well. And that's a huge part of this game. I mean, you've, you can think about some people who just crush it for those two, three years that it's their style and they just tune out and don't get killed. And then they crush it again and they don't get killed. And that might not be, and the more active you are, the harder that can be. But it's just, it's something, it's time sometimes to zoom out when you're so busy in there and have a little perspective on the bigger picture of what you're doing and how you're going to be strong, but you have to be able to, you know, just not kill yourself when it's not that market. And, <clears throat> excuse me, 
that's half the battle. The other half is, well, can I still find things that work? Yeah, you can, but maybe they work less. Maybe you do them smaller. And maybe you're just playing a smaller game for a while, and that's okay. That is totally okay, and stuff will show up. You'll just start seeing stuff. When you're smaller, you start seeing stuff because you don't really care. You can give it a little more room. It's not going to freak you out. You study some new ideas, and then what happens is you start to pick up something. And then eventually your stuff comes back that you used to do, and you'll quickly move your size up again. But it's not a, it's not an equation. It's a, and even people with systems, I imagine, go through the same stuff, where you're tweaking the system and it changes and stops. But and that's I don't know enough about that to speak to that. But I certainly have done the discretionary thing forever, and have gone through this so many times. And I think I mentioned earlier in this podcast, at least the one that got deleted, I did that when I was younger. I would just force it. And it was really tough, tough to be me in terms of how that felt inside to fight the conditions and just keep holding on to what used to be. And it took a lot of drawdowns that I probably didn't need to take because of that. It didn't make me any less strong at my strengths, but probably did take away from a little opportunity too because I always had to you know, go swinging for it a little harder, I felt like, and it put that pressure on myself, which is hard to live with sometimes. So I've gotten a lot better at that. I think people who are doing it longer start to figure that out and that's just part of that's just part of doing something for a long time and kind of getting to know yourself better so i think all of this when your trade stops working is an exercise in perspective risk management and then using a small size to tinker with new things and see if you can add something new figure something else out maybe it's trade less too and you catch one or two events pockets i used to like events like unemployment ECB, I um, uh, said that Fed, um, whatever else, um, or stocks, there's tons of stock stuff you could do, um, Tesla, Battery Day, whatever, things like that, because those would prevent, those would present opportunities for me to kind of go back into my wheelhouse zone, and even if they were only a few times a month, kind of saving myself for those days, and then I could probably see something would be more beneficial than banging around every day than missing one of those days where there's better opportunity for my particular style. And that might not vibe with somebody who doesn't trade like that, which is fine because, like I said, I'm not doing that as much anymore. But um, just some stuff to think about. Probably didn't do the best job here of answering this one. I could talk about this one for a long time, actually. But it's uh, there's a lot of nuances to this one. But hopefully I covered some of the things that could help.